Hi everyone. Today I want to walk you through what we've developed to automatically colorize data tags uh, with a data visualization uh, corresponding to a value on, on the lighting fixtures. Here in this specific example you're looking at these colors represent the circuit number the fixtures are connected to. Well, the, the SOCA leg to be more exact. So these first two are connected to the first leg, these two to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Um, there's kind of two different ways to go at it, the fully colorized or the more refined uh, little uh, circle. But that's the same process. Um, and obviously it can apply to anything you can think of. But today I will dig deeper in that specific example for the circuit. So we'll need to use a user field on lighting devices. We can use a worksheet to be more efficient doing that. We'll need to create a new record format in our Vectorworks file. We need to attach that record to our data tag. Um, we need to create a dynamic text inside our data tag to link the user field to the custom record format. And then we create a, a corresponding data visualization. These are like the broad strokes of the process. So let's start. This data tag I did not invent nor create myself. Uh, this is from an amazing video by KUnit Works. I highly recommend it. It's in the description box below. It's a two-part video. It's, um, you, it's a must-watch. In our specific case here, that's the fixture ID in the bottom, um, universe address in the middle, and the top is the circuit. So that was Soka name LX3C and dot one were the leg, the first leg, dot two, the second leg, the third leg, and so on and so forth. What we first need is to extract that number itself. So just a one, one, two, two, three, three, um, in a user field for that fixture. So we're going to use user field six. Uh, it could be, could be one, two, it could be any of them. Uh, but let's say user field six will represent the circuit uh, number. And what I could do, well, I only have 12 fixtures here. I could certainly go one and then click on the next one and then go to the user field and click one. Uh, that'll take me, you know, 20 seconds, but that doesn't make any sense when you have 350 or 400 fixtures, of course. So to do that more efficiently, um, we'll use a worksheet. With this worksheet, let's recalculate because I've already started with these two. So that worksheet has about the same information that's in those data tags and what I could also do here I could go to and then to uh, since it's a short list but what I usually do on the you know on a large file with 300 or 400 fixtures is export that as a, an Excel spreadsheet the spreadsheet looks something like this um, the exact same thing and I can use a right the right formula for D3 and only one character. So it returns one and then I'll just expand that to get all to isolate with the extract just the last rightmost character of those values. Um, I'll select all of them, control C to copy. And when you're back into your Vectorworks uh, worksheet, if you just go control V or paste, it will only paste where you're selected, that highlighted cell. If you want to paste everything, you need to select the same amount, the same amount of rows that in your original Excel selection. So the 12 of them, and then I'll go Control V, and then everything followed. I'm totally sure there's a way to do that inside Vectorworks itself using worksheet functions, but I'm just such a novice uh, I'm so bad at worksheet functions. I, I don't know. It never seems to produce what I need or what I want. So I'd rather use the Excel. It takes a second and um, I know how to extract it. So now we're done. So if we go to these and then scroll back, of course, the user field is two. If we go at the very last one, this is six and this should be five. Yes. So we, first step done we've assigned a user field with a corresponding circuit number. Put that on the side here. 
Next step, we'll need to create a record format. So I'll use Control R to open the resource manager and I'm in the records uh, folder. I'll right click new resource, new record format. I'll call it uh, circuit num and it's going to only contain one single field which will be well the number itself and it's not going to be text it's going to be an integer and it needs a default we could just put in zero and then click ok to create our new record format now we need to attach that record to our data tag style so if i come here for example this is the data tag style i'm using i'll right click on it and i'll attach a record these are all the records in the file in our case this is circuit num that's the one we want and we'll click ok we see that now it is attached here we'll close the resource manager and next we need to automatically connect the values all the values that are in user field 6 to that record format specifically so if we click on the data tag and we go in data the circuit num record format is attached but the number is zero everywhere and that's not what we want but we don't want to spend the time to manually go in here and type in the numbers um, there is a way to do that automatically so let's go back to shape to edit the tag layout so we need to create a dynamic text that links data in user field 6 to our record format um, so for that we'll just create a text um, let's say a little smaller maybe six um, maybe four and then call it sir as like circuit we are going to make this value disappear later but for now since we're kind of building it I want to highlight it even more obvious in pink for now uh, let's use dynamic text instead and define the tag field here we don't want a formula we want advanced calculated field let's start with the data source it needs to be object parameters but the object name needs to be lighting I'll type light lighting device and the parameter name of course is our user field number six when you edit a tag field if nothing is in the tag field definition nothing is going to work so we just need to remind ourselves to add the definition up here otherwise it will never work um, and then we need to link that to the record format so record format circuit circuit number and the field name well there's only one anyway so it's the number what that means is that data tag to populate that text is going to pull from user field 6 and it's going to send that to the record format of each individual lighting device. Let's click OK. And when we exit, we see that it works. That's why I decided to highlight it in pink and make it super obvious for now. So these two are at one, these two are two, these two are three, four, five, six. Um, and if we click on the data tag itself and we go to data and circuit number, that number is not zero anymore. It's been automatically populated, which is exactly what we wanted we are almost there <laughs> the next thing we need to do is to create a data visualization that reads that number and applies a color accordingly so let's go to our data visualization create a new one and the defined criteria is going to be record so if the record circuit num is present in our case, that means that the objects that meet that criteria are 12, which makes sense because we have 12 fixtures in our Vectorworks file. I'll click OK. And here, I don't want all objects. I want the objects using record. Uh, do you want to proceed? Yes. I want the record circuit num, and I want the number. So these are all the possible values, at least, that, that Vectorworks found inside our file. And um, let's say just auto color for now. These are not the colors I want, but it's just to show you where we're going. Let's click OK. And now we, we're, we're kind of done if that's what you want. But for us at least, um, that, that's too much color. That's too bold. 
and on a paper plan you know in the morning at the venue it's just too overwhelming when there are 200 data tags on the sheet of paper it's 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 too much colors um, so the next two steps uh, we have would be if you're interested would be to hide that little um, number that, because we don't want to see that obviously we just need the data and then we'll do the more refined version as I showed you in the beginning of the video with those um, small circles um, with a little bit of added geometry to achieve that the first thing we need to do is to get rid of that small number we don't want it to be displayed on the data tag we just use that as a dynamic text to link user field 6 to our record format so I don't want it to be displayed here I don't want to show it at all so I'll just edit the tag layout it was here in pink you remember I'll make it super small like two for example I'll bring it up here maybe and it's kind of a hack but it works I'll just put a rectangle on top and that rectangle has an outline I don't want that outline I want it super invisible I'll just put it to none in the pen section so there's nothing here and there we go uh, we've hidden the small numbers and we don't see them on the data tags that's kind of the first step the second step to achieve the more refined uh, circle version um, is still in the data tag layout and next to the circuit I'm going to add a text that's only going to be underscore and that underscore I'll select it so there's kind of this rectangle above the underscore I'm going to apply a pattern on it it will not work if you only apply a solid color or whatever else it absolutely needs to be a pattern and this is the pattern I want um, I want a a busy pattern not something that's very light or only has a few lines on it I want a pattern that's really filled and that's what it made for us uh, it looks weird for now I know uh, let's exit so the next step we need to edit that data visualization instead of I'll double click on it instead of uh, filling the solid it'll retain the original fill um, and then we will override the four color and that is where we will select the appropriate color that we want Let's put in this brown for one and then I need to do that on the six of them so not solid retain original fill override this one will be red click OK and now that I've applied all the appropriate colors I want using retain original fill let's click OK to see what it does in the end so what it did it only applied the color to an existing pattern it found on the data tags which is that rectangle so maybe that's fine for you some kind of rectangle we can make it a little smaller uh, and that would be a, you know a very a purposeful indication uh, we'll go a step further and create some kind of a mask to have only a circle shown we'll go back to edit our tag layout I'll make this a little smaller maybe 10 uh, maybe 11 And then I'm going to move it to the right, something like this, because I want to account for the fact that you know the circuit name might be might be longer than that text here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Now I need to draw a rectangle on top of this rectangle. Something like a little slightly bigger, something like this. And then I I need a circle in the center of that rectangle something like that now the circle is selected I'll, I will holding shift to select the rectangle and we need the clip surface I have it on my right click here uh, if you don't uh, it's in modify uh, clip surface it's right here I can already see if I, I can delete that selecting the circle get rid of it and it'll highlight just the perfect circle of that colorized pattern I can already see here that I'm a little short I'm not hiding that underscore completely let's make it a little bigger and get rid of that outline by making the pen to none 
There we go. That should look good. If we edit, here we are. So we have a super nice circle representing the color on the data visualization. That's it. Um, you can apply this to anything, uh, not only circuits, of course. Um, and uh, let me know what kind of uses you might um, have for that concept. Thanks. See you in the next one.